But again, my wife and I, we've, she, so, we're, so her being a former member, we've gone out and we've met with people. We're happy, we're more than happy to help out because one of the things that we've done with, um, with the former members, one of the things that they've said is that, wow, I can't believe that so and so treated me this way. And we're like, well, yeah, you're not, you're not crazy. <laughs> one of the things they want is kind of reassurance that, because that's one of the things these cults do is they break down your will and resilience and they try to make you the bad guy. And most of the time you're not the bad guy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's one from remember we talked to where the woman she was meeting with was causing a ruckus in the restaurant they were meeting at because she was trying to get her under control. And people around her families were like, going on <laughs> daddy what's going on I, I get her out son and then she, obviously she was freaked out about that but we reassured her that yeah that's kind of par for the course and especially unfortunately for someone who's been doing this i know in her case that woman has been doing that for at least 30 maybe pushing 40 years or so <laughs> it's kind of like well yeah expect a little bit more maturity at that point but on the other hand you're you're not being mature you're being matured by following a man's system instead of being matured by the holy spirit in the process of sanctification mm-hmm. big difference yeah that's um, and then the other thing you know do we i would really like these college campuses especially the christian ministries to kind of have speakers like us come in and kind of like hey watch out for these people be careful they're coming after you before it gets too late um the group here in cincinnati they were kicked off campus in 1999 um because apparently they reached out to the wrong person and they knew people and they had enough evidence to get kicked off campus but they were reinstated uh about 10 years later Got it. Yeah, I guess, oh, we're different now. We're different people. We don't teach that anymore. Kind of. Getting <laughs> keen went away. Sorry. Yeah. Again, if you are in the ICOC or ICC, um, we're praying for you. Uh, we're praying that the scales fall from your eyes. Um, you may have some inklings of emotions that something is wrong and you may want to try and suppress that or confess that to your discipleship partner. But we, both Jason and I encourage you to take that back to what the scriptures say, not just what the ICOC or ICC tell you what the scriptures say, but what the scriptures really say. Um, I would really focus on two things. It would be, you know, the person and work of Jesus. You know, is Jesus just a hardcore glorified man who's somewhat divine, or is he 100% God and 100% man together? Um, And take that and especially look at that paradigm at the cross and what Jesus was going through at the cross. Number two, I would study out the role and work of the Holy Spirit and compare that to Compare and contrast that to your discipleship partner. Um, Again, we can make the case that you personally need to be filled and dwelled, empowered, guided, directed, convicted by the Holy Spirit individually, but you also need that control. How many of those things are does your discipleship partner do? And ultimately, again, we pray you just Get your eyes open and leave. For people who are former members, um, that's one of the sad things about cults because a lot of people I follow on Twitter who have been involved with or rejected the ICOC have rejected God and enti- Christianity entirely. Mm-hmm. Um, they typically become very secular, sometimes radically secularized. And I just want to say, hey, I know you're hurting and you're recovering, but thing is 
you may have, re- there's no doubt in my mind that you rejected the ICOC's concept and ideas of Jesus. You may or may not have rejected the idea of who Jesus really is. 